and it won't kill you to look around a little bit, guys. No one's seen her. Uh, okay. Uh, how about the pit boss? All right, thanks. Oh, yeah, you've, you've been a, a big help. All right. Come on, answer. Hello, Christy. It's, uh, it's Mason Capwell. Well, is it really? I didn't, I didn't realize it was so late. Uh, listen, may I speak to Mary? Oh, she's not. Uh, oh, that's why I could have sworn that Mark said she was there. I, I must have misunderstood. You didn't talk to her today, huh? Hmm. No, no, it's nothing important. I'll catch her tomorrow. You're going back to sleep. Right. Hello, can, can you tell me? Uh, no, dígame la enfermera McCormick estaba en la centro comunidad esta noche. No. Gracias. Tim, I uh, I want you to track down a car for me. It's registered to a Mary Duval McCormick. Yeah, special doesn't even begin to describe her, Tim. Mm, no, no, it's no joke this time. I've got to find her. Uh, get, get back to me as soon as you can, okay? Yeah, I owe, I owe you one. I've wanted you to. I've thought about this as much as you know. I've even dreamed about this. Have you? I want you. That's why I came here. I want to be with you. I know this changes everything. My life. Your life. Don't be afraid. If it makes us happy, what can be wrong with it? But there are other people involved. How can we think of just ourselves? There are so many other things to think about. I can't do this. I can't do this. Mary, wait. I'm responsible for this. If there's any blame that belongs to me, I'll accept it. But don't go. Not now. Excuse me. Yes, sister. I'm sorry to disturb you, sister. I mean, Mary. But you have a visitor at the gate. At this hour? Who? Well, he didn't give his name, but um, I think it's very important. Shall I bring him back? Sorry, you must have the wrong number. You wish. Listen, lover boy, I have to see you right now. There's no one here by that name. Don't tell me Eden's in bed with you. That's right. Oh, she must be asleep. That's all you're good for in bed. I told you, you have the wrong number. Then get to another phone and call me back. I don't care what you tell Sleeping Beauty. Tell her you're going to go attempt another murder for all I care. Just call me. Kirk. Kirk. You creep. Maybe I should disconnect it. Oh, well, it wasn't your fault it was a wrong number. I just don't want any more interruptions. That's all. Now, your skin is so soft. 
I used to lie in my hospital bed thinking about what it was like to touch you and kiss you. Make love to you. I'm sorry. What's wrong, Eden? It's just so much has happened, you know. You were so sick. I'm fine now. And don't you see, we've, we've been given a second chance. You kept me alive. You gave me something that no doctor could give me. You gave me the will to go on. I used to dream about us being together like this. We belong to each other. You're mine. No. Why can't you just come home? I won't pressure you. I feel safe here. I want to be here right now. Mary, hiding from our problems isn't going to help us solve them. I'm not hiding, Mark. This convent gave me the courage once to leave and go into the outside world, and I think it's going to give me the courage to make the decision I need to make now. Is Mason part of that decision? I don't know. I saw him today. What, what did he say? He said you were with him before you left. Yes, we talked. Is that all? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Mark, you know there was a time when I thought you knew me better than anybody, and I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, don't say that, Mary. I get jealous sometimes. I never did anything to I know you. that, and I didn't come up here to argue. Listen, I've been doing some thinking of my own. In fact, I found something that belongs to you. You remember when we were in school and I was so worried about getting accepted into college? You gave this to me. You told me it was as good as worry beads. I hope it gives you some of the peace of mind that it gave me then. Thank you. You better leave now. They don't allow visitors after 10. Yeah, I'm glad they made an exception. It makes me feel just, feel better just to have seen you. Mark, I'm not doing this to punish you. I just feel at peace here and I need some time alone. I can give that to you. I won't bother you. Thanks for understanding. Mary. What about Mason? Mason's not going to be seeing me here, Mark. I I don't know how I feel. I'm I'm confused. Then Mary, take all the time that you need. But please remember that I do love you. Goodbye, Mark. Good night, Mary. any idea how I felt when you and Cruz walked into my hospital room together? I didn't know he was going to be at the hospital. Oh, come on. You guys can't stay away from each other. I mean, you lie to me, he lies to Santana. Stop. Why? Because I'm hitting too close to home? You know, maybe, maybe what I said to Cece this afternoon, maybe those were the first true words spoken in this house in years. Adultery seems to be a common thing among the Capitals. Would you have believed me if I told you it wasn't true? I want to! I really do want to believe you. But how am I supposed to feel when you treat me like I have some kind of weird disease that you don't want to get too close to? Kirk, you have been very sick. Well, maybe it would have been better for you if I had just died. Don't say that. Then stop making excuses. I'm fine. I've told you that a thousand times, Eden. I'm feeling better. Every day. Would you please just tell me the truth? Just once. Just try it. For once. I don't want to make love to you tonight. How's that? What, what have I ever done to make you treat me like this? Have I ever even looked at another woman since we've been together? No. I'm 
I'm trying, but I just don't really want to talk about this right now. We have to talk about it now, even otherwise it's just going to go on. Don't you see? This is our chance to start over. I know we've made a lot of mistakes. A lot of things I've done that I'm not proud of, but marrying you, Eden, that was right. I mean, I knew when I did that, that would be the first thing in my life that was perfect. It's far from it. But it can be. We can make it perfect right now, Eden. I just have to feel like I'm a part of you. Don't say that. You know, I keep on thinking about the baby. Keep on thinking that there was one thing in our life that was so right and, and it was just taken away from us. Baby wasn't going to change anything, Kirk. You don't know that. A baby <laughs> could have given us the chance to forget the past. A family could have helped us to plan for the future. I am not going to have a baby to try to mend a relationship. I am going to have a baby when I feel like I want to share my love. Please come back to bed with me. I can't. Just to lie with me, please. That's all. Just to lie next to me. Hello. I'm parked right outside in my car. Everything's okay, just hang up. If not, say something. was it? I don't know. I, I guess it was a wrong number. You didn't even hear a voice? No. when that obnoxious yellow thing appears in the sky and blinds me as I attempt to drive home. Oh, the casino. Oh, the hero of the martyred woman is highly overrated. You know, I don't mean to bring up the obvious, but I know you sold Lionel's paintings. I know you made a fortune. Why are you working at the casino anyway? Because I meet such interesting people, like last night. Our ex-manager, the ever-scruffy Dylan Hartley, came in dragging one leg. Was he hurt? I suppose so. Then Mason called and asked me to search the place for his ex-nun, ex-girlfriend. After what Cece did to Warren, uh, why are you still working there? Because I own 20% of the place. No, actually, I am looking for something else. Fast. Uh, okay. Oh, no. No, no. Tell somebody I died of exhaustion and send the contributions to the fund to eliminate C.C. Capwell in this lifetime. <laughs> Hi. Well, does that mean you're happy to save me? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I was just in the middle of working on your case. Was it that funny? Hardly. I'm requesting a change of venue. I think there's been too much publicity on this case, and I, I think it's, it's going to affect the trial. Well, I hope the judge agrees. I'm also asking that Mason be taken off as prosecuting attorney. I think that uh, he shouldn't be defending a capital trial, do you? I'm sure he thinks he's avenging his family. Well, good. He can avenge his family from the sidelines. You're pretty tough in the clinches, Miss Wainwright. Don't get too confident. We'll probably lose on both motions. Uh, I've got to go. I've got to file these things down in the court. Don't you? Okay, I'll see you later. Actually, I'd like you to stay here. What? Uh, some papers were turned up through an investigation, and I would like to talk about them. Oh. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Uh, make yourself at home. Have some coffee. All right. Okay. 
David, I... I forgot to ask you how your meeting went with Cassie. Why didn't you just come straight out and ask me, Julia? <sighs> she came to see me last night. She supported everything that you said. She said that she lied to hurt you. She said that? Mm -hmm. She was very convincing. She said that you were incapable of hurting anyone, let alone Madeline. You seem to cast quite a spell over the ladies. Not all the ladies, I'm afraid. I won't get off. Draw this up for me, please. It's a will? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been putting it off for such a long time. Everyone's been encouraging you to get it done. Sophia, our money industry says a whole brigade of lawyers who could do this for you. Why me? I don't know. I guess I just got sentimental. I wanted to be in the family. Or ex-family, as the case may be. Looks pretty thorough. Think you might want to leave Lionel a house, though. It's a short one now. Would you do it for me? Oh, sure. You're not the only sentimental Capwell left, you know. To my ex-husband, C.C. Capwell, I bequeath. Are you sure you wrote this in sound mind and body? Perfectly. To my stepson, Mason. Well, there's something wrong here. Would you just draw it up as written, please? Sophia, I haven't done much to deserve this. I'm not leaving it to you. I'm leaving it to a wonderful young boy I knew one time who needed love desperately. Ah, Sophia, good. Mark. Sophia, excuse me, but your housekeeper told me I'd find you here. Now, you and I need to talk, please, right away. All right. I'm sure you'll want to talk in private. Thank you, Miss. You, um, uh, really want to do something for me, Sophia? Call me later. I mean, it was not necessary to come all the way over Sophia, here. Sophia, after the last time I saw you, I didn't think you'd come to me. Now, Sophia, you have to have that biopsy. You need it as soon as possible. Now, I'd like you to come with me to my office right now. I can't. I told Kelly I'd wait here. Uh, leave a note. Mark, it can wait. No, Sophia, it can't. Mark, I know what I have. And I want to handle it in my own way and when I'm ready to. Sophia, you can make as many excuses as you want, but all you're really saying is that you don't matter to anyone. That your health isn't important. That you're not important. Could you just leave me alone, please? One more day is not going to make any difference. Sophia, you're such a wonderful woman. I assume that you thought more of yourself than that. Does Mary usually come by here to check up on you? Why don't you just leave Mary alone? She's married. Or doesn't that mean anything to you either? Is that you talking, Kirk, or did that come from Madeline's heart? Why didn't you just say that in the first place? Because it's an asinine password. But it works, and it's a lot better than getting caught. <laughs> what took you so long to call me back? How could you have been so stupid as to call me back last night? I only called you once, Kirk. Now, it had to be you. Well, it wasn't. Maybe it was Cruz or one of Eden's other boyfriends. Maybe a new one. Uh, Eden isn't seeing anyone else. 
Clark, I thought you had your heart transplanted, not your brain. No, we set everything straight last night. And you believe that? She wants our marriage to work. Oh, sure, as long as she can have the occasional fling, why not? Oh, you just shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. When Eden made love to me last night, she was telling the truth. Why are you laughing? <laughs> you and Eden made love and patched everything up. And pigs have wings. <laughs> oh, that, that is beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I thought you'd like it. You see, what I would do is simply vary the design for your wife's necklace. For example, moving the aquamarine to a different position. Mm, how interesting. How long would it take? Oh, three weeks at best. Is that average? I mean, couldn't you just uh, copy this one? You see, three weeks is cutting it a little close. Well, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Mendez. This is unusual. Uh, rush order. Uh-huh. How rushed? I can't really say. Perhaps I can jog your memory. It says here it was six weeks from start to finish. Okay. Who are you? I'm Inspector Castillo with the Santa Barbara Police. Well, what do you want from me? The truth. I'm investigating an attempted murder. You cooperate, everything's cool. Of course, of course. Anything I can do to help. You see, a person in my business needs all the help he can get from the cops. Right? I'm glad you feel that way, you see, because we are dealing with a rather difficult coincidence here. Yeah. The attempt I referred to was made on the same day you said you took this rush order. Hey, all I know is the guy wanted it as soon as possible. I delivered as promised. Why the delay in delivery? He was laid up. See, he's the guy with the transplant. Right. Mm. Well, then I'm sure you wouldn't mind if I took a quick look at your books just to determine that the diamonds were actually ordered and cut when they should have been? Absolutely. You do have a search warrant, of course. No. Mm. But I'll be back with one. I guess I'd better give you some friendly advice. Please. Don't touch anything. Oh, I run an honest business. I don't have a thing to hide. Then we have no problem. Mm-mm. Damn number. <laughs> Gina, if you would stop cackling for a minute, you might have heard I'm ready to give you a break. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just hard to believe you and Eden together after all Shut up, Gina. Now, now listen to me. I want that tape. Oh, no kidding. But as soon as I hand it over to you, I'm a dead woman. I've already got an alibi, Gina. That jeweler has enough to keep him happy. As far as the world's concerned, I was buying a present for my wife. Except the tape tells the truth. Gina, listen to me carefully. Your life's worth a whole lot less with that tape than without it. You're the only thing that stands between me and a perfect alibi. Think about that, Gina. Hey, you slime. Are you recording this? No, no, it must be another call coming through on your line. Hit, hit the cutoff and pick up a wind. Brandon. Your friendly neighborhood jeweler. What the hell have you got me into, lady? Why? What's wrong? There was a cop here asking a lot of questions about that necklace. He also had the invoice. All right. Look, just hang on. I'll get right back to you. Kirk, we're in big trouble. I have the jeweler on the other line, and he said there was a cop who came around asking questions about the necklace. Was it Cruz? I don't know. Well, we'll find out. All right. Uh, Gina, wait. Uh, find out everything he told me. Okay, I'll do the best I can. Just a minute. Hi. Um, the cop that came around asking questions, was he a uh, 30-ish, good-looking Chicano? Yeah, that's about right. Mm -hmm. well, uh, where is he now? Well, he's out getting a search warrant so he can look through my books. Now, look, lady, I am not taking the fall for this. So you and your friend better get your act together and think of something fast. Why? I mean, what can he find out? Well, he can find out that your boy bought the most expensive Zircon in the world. That I didn't even order the real stones. Oh, he could trace the fraud in a second. Well, can't you do something to cover the books? Yes. Oh, yes, I could rework the books. But you see, forgery don't come cheap. 
A hundred thousand. And that's my bottom line. All right. I'll get it for you. Just sit tight. Kirk, it was Cruz. And the jeweler said he can cover up the bookkeeping and cover the books, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. How much? Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred? Is he crazy? Where am I going to get that kind of money? I don't know, but you better find it fast. I mean, we've got to cover our tracks. A pretty boy like you wouldn't last long in jail, Kirk. Gina, please. I'm trying to think. Well, you better hurry up. Oh, and I saved the best for last. Cruz had the invoice. I'll give you three guesses as to who gave it to him. Brilliant. Your loving wife set you up. So much for your night of connubial bliss. Well, freedom has a nice round price tag, Kirk. Two hundred thousand dollars. I've got to get down to the demolition site. Uh, do me a favor, will you please? Uh, see if you can locate that invoice. I need it for insurance purposes. Sure. Hello? Hi, is Kirk there? Uh, yes, all right. Time to think fast. Does anybody know about the ticket trip? Uh, yes, Daddy. Uh, I, in fact, was going to call you sooner or later. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's great, Eden. Now, make it sound like he just asked you to uh, go along with it. Baja. I'd, I'd love to. It would be great to get away. Listen carefully. I just came from that jeweler's. The man is definitely covering something. Sounds wonderful. I'm getting a warrant right now so I can go back and nail it down. I'd be willing to bet my right hand that Kirk was nowhere near Ojai that day. You still there? Uh, yeah. Listen, why don't you ask Kirk to join you in Baja? Are you sure? Uh, don't worry. He's not about to leave town while his alibi's falling apart. Well, hold on a second. Daddy wants to know if you'd like to go to Baja with us. Well, that's, that sounds great. Are you sure? Well, yeah, I, w I would love to. Um, but, you know, I really do have a lot of uh, paperwork I have to take care of. But why don't you just tell CC I appreciate it very much. You sure you don't want to go? Yes, I'm, I'm very sure. In fact, I'm sure the two of you could uh, could use that time together after the stunt I pulled last night. No, 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 tell him. Tell him no. You go. I'll see you later. Bye. He's gone. You're right, he didn't go. Good. Pack a bag and do what you have to stay away from Kirk's not going to try anything here. Eden, if I'm right, when he finds out that I'm onto his jeweler, he's going to get desperate. What do you think he's going to do? I don't know, and I don't want to imagine. Just, just stay away, away from the guy. Whatever you do, just stay away. I don't want to seem inhospitable, but would you wait somewhere else, please? Anywhere else but here? Of course. Tell Julia to call me. You call yourself. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, well, I see that uh, Gus kept your company. I'd like to talk to you. All right, we will later. No. Why don't I call you later? I need to talk to you today. We will talk later. David. What happened? What did you want me to do? Call room service for him? At least he had the good manners to leave. He is my guest. Julia, he's an accused murderer. I could have been tomorrow's headlines. Oh, don't be ridiculous. How do you know he's innocent? I'm defending him. Isn't that reason enough? That's what I'm wondering about. Who are your other clients? The Marquis de Sade and John Wilkes Booth? Haven't you ever been wrongly accused of anything in your life, Oh, Augusta? yes. Many times, but certainly not murder. Look, that man could have murdered his own wife. Are you through? I'm just trying to understand what could make an otherwise very intelligent, beautiful young lady act like an idiot. Ah, yes. It's probably the easy charm... The handsome good looks. It's deja vu, isn't it? It's Jack Lee all over again. You always know the wrong thing to say at the wrong time, don't you? My business with David is purely professional, but thank you very much for the faith in me, Augusta. Would you let me go to the office? Is that the only way I'm going to get some peace and quiet? Your office! What a novel idea! Then you could possibly ask your clients to wait there instead of a lot of homicidal maniacs stalking the hallways while I sleep. You are the one, if I may remind you, who asked me to come live here with you. I will, I will invite who I want, where I want, when I want, whether you like it or not. 
But if Eden knows the truth, why did she stay with me last night? You could go gray trying to figure out a cap well. Yeah, unless she doesn't really know, at least not yet. But either way, that, that jeweler could finish me. Both of us? Kirk? Wait a minute. I've seen that look in your eye before. You can just forget it. Give the man his money before he talks. No, no, but even if I do come up with the $200,000, the blackmailing could go on forever. You have to at least try. And I still have you and that damn tape hanging over my head. What do you want me to tell the jeweler? I don't know. Um, tell him anything. I just, I need some time to think. He's calling in 10 minutes, Yeah, Kurt. all right, all right. Tell him, uh, tell him to close up the shop. That you're coming to Ojai to pick him up. Tell him that he's got to come here if he wants his money. Why don't you pick him up? I can't. I've got to go to the demolition site. I promised Eden I would fill in for her. Well, then he can drive himself no, down No, you here. have to do it, Gina. I'm trying to save both of our necks here. I'm just trying to buy us some time, all right? All right. All right, I'll do it. All right. Bring him to the marina, 7 o'clock. The marina? Yeah, at 7 o'clock. It'll be closed by then. They're working on a, a ferry boat. It, it's in for repairs. I'll, I'll be on it. This is crazy. Uh, I, I can't be seen giving this man money, Gina. You have to do it. All right, now I have to go. I'm running very late. I have to raise $200,000. Seven o'clock, remember. fight me on this. It's very important. I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important. Haley, it's a matter of life and death. Mine. Who's there? It's me, darling. I came in the back way. How did the demolition go? Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't like the setup, so I figured I'd just check out the uh, state regulations, you know, the department manual. And oh, it seems like a good idea. Yeah. Well, I guess I should collect my muddy shoes from the kitchen and head on over there. Oh, uh, Kirk, I found that invoice that you wanted. You did? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad it turned out. I'll see you later. I think I keep wanting to feel sorry for him. Don't start with his benefit of the doubt routine. He doesn't deserve it. Come on, let's get you out of here. Are you sure we're right? Let's go back. You can come in. The coast is clear. I'm sorry about Augusta. She can be a real pain. It's all right. I'm getting used to it. Oh, I'm a big hit in public, too. We're going to change that once we prove your innocence. Yeah, well, right now it looks like the cards are pretty well stacked against me, doesn't it? Maybe not. I want to show you something. I received this a couple of days ago. My investigator found this uh, with some of Madeline's personal correspondence. A new will? Dated four days before her murder, signed by Madeline and witnessed. How did you get this? My investigator found it. It's the one piece of evidence that the prosecution is looking for. <laughs> well, this certainly gives me a motive. She cut me out of everything, didn't she? Did you know about it? No. Why didn't the police get this when they went to her things? Maybe it wasn't there. Ah. Who else knows about it? No one, I don't think. I mean, I didn't hear from her attorney or Courtney, and the police certainly don't know about it. I'm just glad that we got a hold of it. You don't think this is a, a fake? I mean, the way it's been witnessed and everything. There are ways. It's just, it's all too convenient. It ties you right to the murder. Yeah, but if that were true, why didn't I destroy this? You would have if you were the murderer, but you didn't know about it. If this is a frame, who would do it like this? The real killer. And I think he's out there somewhere, and I think he's watching every move that you make. 
This is a nightmare. Well, it's a real one. We've got to find the killer, David, and we've got to do it fast. Mason looked like he was up all night hunting for you. Uh, Sophia, please don't let him know that I was here. Mark doesn't know that we're talking either. All right, I won't. But Mark called you, didn't he? Yes. You have to have this procedure. Mary, please. I know about early detection. I know about warning signs. I... It's, uh... It's just that I, that I couldn't even leave this apartment all day long. I feel paralyzed. Anybody would be afraid. Mary, I don't want to even know. Sophia, you have to find out what it is you're dealing with here. Mary, I don't want to lose. I don't want a mastectomy. It might not happen. The biopsy may very well prove that the, the tumor is, is benign. And what if it doesn't? Then, Sophia, there are thousands of women who have this surgery and they end up being active and being every bit as attractive to men as they've ever been. I think that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> you see, I've been alone I, so much of my life. And I'm afraid of being alone again. And if I do this, this doesn't mean that you're going to be alone. Sophia, I don't know much about your life, but I know that you've overcome some really extraordinary problems. That you can't stop fighting now. You can't just stop living. Don't you know how much your children love you? Don't you know how much they need you? You are so important. Well, you're certainly right. I have, uh, I've had that face a lot of things. <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right, I'm gonna do, I'll do it, I'll do the bios. Thank you, thank you. I'm so glad. It's not that difficult to make a decision when you know what's going to happen. You can't know for sure. I know. Well, let's take it one step at a time then, all right? I'm really sorry. I have to go. Okay. I'll call you real soon. Yeah. Mary? I haven't had anyone to talk to about this. I, I just don't know what I would have done without you. You would have had the biopsy. You're going to survive this, Sophia. Even when you believe that you won't, you will. You don't know how much you've helped me. Thank you. And good luck. God bless you. Mason? Oh. What? Mason, have you been drinking? No, I was just catching 40. I'll say, you didn't even hear the phone? No, did it ring? Yeah. Who was it? Uh, I don't know, but he says it's important. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, Roy, hi, what's up? You found her? Oh, Roy, you're a genius. What can I say? Yeah, wh where is she? What? Uh-oh. No, okay, thanks. Listen, uh, Roy, I've got to run. Right.
out here just as fast as I could. How is your friend? She's going to be okay. I'm going to remember her in my prayers tonight. I will as well. Thank you, sister. Oh, I'll get that. Enjoy it. You got the warrant? Yeah. You know, sometimes I really want to believe that he's innocent, but sometimes he looks at me. Keep doing this. No, I've got to say this. If he did it, he did it because I pushed him to do it. Kirk has always known that I've loved you. I would lay in bed with him at night, and he would know that I was thinking about you. He was that I was thinking about us. I wouldn't even let him touch me. I couldn't. Eden, you are not to blame for what Kirk has done. I lied to him. I told him I'd learn to love him one day, but I felt like I was being unfaithful to you. Maybe I'm the crazy one. Maybe that's not so crazy. Let's get you to the yard. 